training will be of the following matters which is self explanatory to this and in this form only our parts will be explained and discussed the introduction why we need the fire protection in the brief fire protection is the engineering or fire safety engineering is the applications of science and engineering principle to protect people and their environment from the destructive effect of fire and smoke if it is installed properly it can save a property and the life this is the beginning of our first part and in this first part we will be covering the class of fires classification of occupancy and the fire hazards these will be duly explained in the oncoming slides what is class of fire class of fires are classified according to the type of fire and its combustibility class a fire involves solid combustible materials of organic nature such as wood paper rubber plastic etc where the cooling effect of water is essential for extinction of fires class b fire involving flammable liquids or liquid or liquid solids or the like where a blanking effect is essential class c fires involve flammable gases under pressure including liquefied gases where it is necessary to inhibit the burning gas at fast rate with an inert gas powder or vaporizing liquid of for extinguishment class d fires involve combustible metals such as magnesium aluminum zinc sodium potassium etc the classification of occupancies buildings are designated in the group as per their occupancy like group a is the residential group b educational group c institutional group d assembly group e business group f mercantile group g industrial group h is the storage and the group j is the hazardous these are actually further classified as per its size and the heights etc the more details is available as in the nbc 2005 part 4 which shows the broad classification of occupancy of non industrial and industrial occupancies in the 
oncoming sessions we will be discussing it further in detail classification of occupancies as per the hazard are classified as a light hazard ordinary hazard high hazard class and storage hazard this is also further detailed and explained in the nbc part 4 nsls the broad classification of non industrial hazards are the light hazard and the ordinary hazard these things are duly explained in very much detail as i explained that part 4 and the tac that is a tariff committee advisory and the fire protection design manual in short these are explained over here the assembly buildings are classified in the d4 and d5 sections of the same nbc part and likewise they are explained this way and these are the ordinary hazard which are explained as airports and other terminal buildings assembly buildings which is in the following the category of d1 to d3 residential apartment other than what light hazard because there are the restrictions because of the height and the volume of the buildings fire protection systems this section explains what type of fire protection systems are we will be seeing there are two type of fire protection systems active fire protection and the passive fire protection active fire protection system are also categorized which are water based which includes automatic sprinklers hydrants and the hose systems etc drenching system is used for cooling the surfaces diluent systems which is discharges the water from the open nozzles and for different applications of the water this fire fighting systems are also further categorized in the medium velocity water spray systems high velocity water spray system the gas based fire protection systems are generally carbon dioxide fm200 and other intergen gases foam based system this type of fire protection system is used for the flammable liquids that like diesel petrol etc and the chemical based which are applied with the dry chemicals and the wet chemicals for different kind of hazardous materials in the active fire protection systems we also include the portable and mobile fire extinguishers these extinguishers are 
according to the class of fire and the place in the position as a first aid. And this is the example of a dry chemical system which are generally used for open fires in the kitchen areas. Passive fire protection system. Passive fire protections are nothing but a precautionary measures which are to prevent the spread of fires and these are applied in containing the fire in the compartments in the form of the compartments and those are in general and has to be designed or taken care by these kind of applications. In this we are including the applicable codes as part of the training and those codes are generally the following the Bureau of Indian Standards and Codes, National Building Codes, Tariff Advisory Committee guidelines, NFPA codes and standard, loss prevention certification board this is governed by the British Association of the Fire, fire Production, international fire codes, uniform fire codes, guidelines and certification from the factory mutuals, underwriter laboratories, and Bureau of Standards Engineering that is 12845 Automatic Sprinkler System and the design and installation of fixed Automatic Sprinkler Fire Extinguishing System Code of Practice. This is the end of our part one. Thank you very much for listening.